Hello there. I hope your night is going well. Tonight, I'm going to talk about the topic of hard determinism, proven and verified, distinguished from the falsehood and lie of quote-unquote free will, and why hard determinism works in a way that is actually more what you could call mutual determinism, in the sense of not that we specifically will or want or desire things to specifically go a particular way, but the fact that our brains and bodies and physiologies are involved directly in what is being caused for everything else that occurs. While everything else that is occurring is causing what we think, feel, and desire at the same time. So <clears throat> I wanted to clarify this to people to help them understand more clearly what I've recognized and what I see is going on with this particular reality, okay? This particular universe. And it's very easy to recognize. It's not that hard if you just sit and think about it for a minute. So free will is immediately disproven because if free will existed, number one, there would be no possibility. If free will ever existed for any of us, ever, there would be no potentiality of any of us ever being forced into anything or any experience against our will ever. Cause you could just will yourself immediately to experience whatever it is. And that's all you would be experiencing is what you're willing to experience and what you're desiring to experience. That's it. You would never experience anything imposed on you from any outside source or will under any circumstances. If actual literal free will outside of the figurative sense was real. <clears throat> so, People just need to throw off the word free from will when they're talking about it because will is never free by definition. Will is always desire driven and what we desire is hard determined. It's based on our hormonal system. <clears throat> it's based on our influences, our upbringing, what we read, what we hear, what we think about, how we meditate. And so what we will is determined. Okay. <clears throat> we will things that are pleasurable and us willing things that are pleasurable for ourselves, sensationally and otherwise, is hard determined. And if somebody desires to, for example, gain a large amount of muscle, their will is for the pleasure of what having a large amount of muscle will mean for them in their life. Better health, ability to lift heavier weights, physical attractiveness to women, etc., etc., right? <clears throat> or whatever the case may be. So their will at the end of that is a pleasure-driven will. They're not willing specifically to feel agony and pain in the interim. They're just willing to take on the inevitability of the pain and, and frustration and trudging to get to that pleasure at the end of it, or to experience the pleasure ultimately from it, or the pleasure of the process of exercising for the goal. So, so the focus, the will is still directed towards pleasure, um, you know, they're not, they're not willing to purposefully destroy their body with exercise to where their body gradually degrades more and more and more and they die. Obviously they're, they're willing something pleasurable from the thing that is other than pleasurable. Okay. So a lot of people say, well, some people will this and will that will all these like miserable things. Well, they're willing some, even in a case of sadist sadism or masochism, they're getting some sadistic pleasure or masochistic pleasure. Like if somebody cuts themselves or if they sadistically harm somebody else, they're, they're not just doing it for the sake of doing it. They're doing it because there's some sadistic pleasure they're getting from it hormonally or brain wise or whatever. Otherwise they wouldn't be doing it. They're, they're people be, beings, sentient forms, of the human type don't do things for any other reason than an experience of pleasure. Okay. So that's determined. The drive for pleasure is determined and that's the reality. So <clears throat> will exists, but will is hard determined what we will, how we will, why we will, etc. So let me just simplify this as much as I can to not confuse anybody, because the biggest thing I keep running into so often in conversations with people, and it ends up leading to like hour long conversations where they just keep looping things around in a circle because they seem to keep missing a key point. And I've been trying to rack my brain. How do I explain this to people to where they're going to understand what I'm getting at here to where they're not going to 
keep bouncing back and forth between either it's hard to term it or it's not. <clears throat> so people always talk about, okay, so basically hard determinism means that all forms, everything that goes on here, every form, every brain, every body, every sentience, we're all just puppets on strings, basically. That's the analogy they give. We're all just like moving around automaton robotic puppets on strings. Just everything is determined what we think, feel, do it. And that's, that's all it is. That's, that's what's going on. Right. So to a certain extent, that's kind of what's going on, but that's not the full picture. It, it's basically like a very, very rudimentary understanding of hard determinism and only one aspect of it. There's more going on here with hard determinism than that. We're not just these automaton robots thinking, feeling, willing, doing it, it just that's all there is to it. No, there's more happening than just that. Okay. That is one aspect, but that's not the only thing happening here. Okay. So let's give a very simplified example. So you have, let's just say you have a dark room. Okay. And it's, it's 20 feet. That's a circular room. That's 20 feet across, right. In diameter. And then you have 10 people in that room. Okay. And let's just, just for the sake of discussion to simplify what I'm trying to get at here. Let's say that the 10 people in that room are the only beings that exist at all. Okay. Let's say there's a hypothetical universe where they are the only beings at all that exist. Okay. There's no other beings that exist. It's just the dark room, 20 feet across in diameter. They're the only entities that exist at all in this particular thought experiment universe. Okay. <clears throat> now they have the ability to think, feel, speak, and interact and do all this other type of stuff within this 20 foot parameter uh, box. Right. So the first thing is the first determining factor is the fact that they're in this locked in 20 foot diameter room. This 20 foot diameter room is their entire universe for them as far as they're concerned. Okay. So they have the ability to talk, think, feel, experience, all this other type of stuff. So one person speaks and then the other nine people, what they hear is determined by what that person says. And what that person says is determined by the conditions in the room. It's determined by what another person says or whether another person brushes up against that person or not. So what's happening is it's mutually being determined what's happening in the room by each of those individuals. So you could say that nine people are determining what the other 10th person is doing and vice versa. You go to the next person, the other nine people are determining what he's doing. And then the next person, the other nine people are determining what she's doing, etc. Okay. So they're all determining what each other is doing. So they're involved in what's being determined for the others. So you could practically say that everything that you think, feel, say, and do is determined by everything else. Okay. But you're involved in what is being determined for everything else aside from you directly. And even that's an oversimplification of what I'm trying to get at here. Okay. So none of it's free. All of it is determined, but you, your brain, your body, your thoughts, your physiology are part of what is doing the determining itself. Okay. So you're not, you may be a puppet on one level, but on another level, you're not a puppet because on the level of, okay, there's forces beyond your control. There's vast cosmic forces moving everything. Right. So in that context, okay, you could say you're a puppet in that context, but for everything that's happening in relationship to what you say and do and think and feel and speak and whatever, and how you move, all of those things that are being determined by you or what's considered you doing those things, the puppet you, right? Is the puppet you is determining what's happening to other puppets. The puppet you is determining what's happening to other forms that are not specifically directly you. So you're not disconnected from what's being determined. Okay. You're involved in what's being determined. And this is why I use the term mutual in the sense that it's happening at the same time. Now, a lot of people have this idea that this universe is being run by like this, you know, 
cosmic wizard of Oz type figure behind, behind the screen. Like, okay, every last little micro detail is predetermined before it happens. So there's a big difference that people really need to understand. Hard determinism is not the same thing as pre calculated determinism. And I think this is the big problem people run into when thinking about determinism. They look at it from like a, a domino effect perspective. And so that's only one aspect of it, though. There's more at play. It's not only a domino effect. It's that, uh, and because when you, when you have that, what you run into is this problem of infinite eternal regression back into the infinite past. So one thing causes another thing causes, and that, that causes that, God causes that, that determines that. You know, so it just, you end up running into a redundancy principle if that's the only aspect of hard determinism you understand. And sadly, this is why there's been this constant around in circles bullshit going on between hard determinists and free willists or libertarian free willists or compatibilists, people to try to compromise between the two. The problem is they're all running in circles on a thing that's already solved and is a non-issue. The hard determinists have the more, most clear understanding, but it seems like the majority of them, unless they're scientists or unless they're really hyper deep philosophers, really don't understand it correctly. Uh, it's, it's a big problem in the world of discussions I see on this topic. So you see people who are big thinkers in other ways, and they're, they're also not properly understanding this correctly, which is, I look at it, I'm just like, wow, that's really interesting. Um, but it's not that complicated. It's, it's not as complicated as a lot of people think it is. Because think about it. Okay. Let's give an example, a real world example within the legal system, right? Because people bring up the topic all the time of, okay, if hard determinism is real and the case and is what's going on here, then literally the whole legal system is just a big sham and it's just a big... You know, it's, it's, there's no, because it was determined that the school shooter would kill all the kids in the school, right? Everything that happened in the universe, it predetermined that he for sure specifically would kill all those kids. So therefore he's not at fault. No one's at fault. Nothing's at fault. It's just, things are just happening. That's all that's going on. And it's like, no, that's a very, very limited understanding of what's happening here. And so it's a really dumb understanding too. So it really, it's, it kind of surprises me how people stupefy their own consciousness and they try to kind of just get in this like weird, like, see, that was determined too. see that was determined. It's like, yeah, it's being determined, but it doesn't mean you're disconnected. It's like they, it's like people have this idea that what is being determined is like this completely independent, disconnected thing from you, like entirely like, okay, what's the determiner and the determining thing is like this completely separate thing in and of itself entirely that has nothing to do with you whatsoever at all. And then you're literally only this little puppet. That's it. Period. Therefore determining thing going on you puppet. That's wrong grasp of hard determinism, incorrect grasp of it. Okay. It's that <clears throat> in the case of a school shooter, right. <clears throat> and why, the legal system is definitely flawed and corrupt and fucked up. Yes, for sure. It's definitely not a perfect system by any stretch of the imagination. But it does have its functionality and validity in these particular cases, and here's why. So, in the case of all these different school shooters, right, it's not that there is some mastermind sitting behind a computer screen somewhere and you know okay if we find out at some point via evidence or whatever that, there, that this whole thing is literally a virtual computer simulation and there was a hyper calculated mastermind pre-thinking every little micro detail of the whole thing okay if we find that that specifically is the case so be it and then what i'm talking about the mutual determinism thing will apply to his situation there okay but the evidence seems to indicate that it's not pre-calculated in that way or to that degree. Okay. So going on what we can observe here, we can see that, okay, these school shooters, they, in their brains and physiologies, they had this urge to follow through and end up killing innocent people. Okay. And they justified it to themselves in their brain as to why they should do that. Or they didn't and they just did it due to their brain chemistry 
urging them to do so, right? And their physiology. So everything that was going on at the time within their brain physiology, all that other type of stuff was involved in determining what they did. But it wasn't 100% guaranteeing for certain that they would do that exactly and only that thing because they themselves also were involved in determining what is happening with and in regards to everything else that's going on at the same time. Okay. So it's this constant active at every moment determinism going on versus, okay, I'm sitting in a dark room and you're going to walk 20 feet that way at exactly this time at exactly the state. You're going to talk to this exact person. This molecule is going to be here and it's going to be over here. And this corpse is going to rot in this particular position. And this animal is going to eat at this exact time. And this, you see what I'm saying? It's that <clears throat> things are determining each other all at once. All right. Actively and ongoingly. And yes, what happened before is a factor in what is being determined that follows, but it's not the only factor that is determining what follows. The other factor is the other things that are happening past going into future. So it's this, it's this constant ongoing determinism versus some predestined determinism. Okay. Yeah. There may be something we can confirm that exists as some like overarching predestined theme or something to your life or the, uh, some overarching theme to a particular world of cosmos or something or something like that. But in terms of like every last little micro detail being determined in a pre-calculated sense or a predetermined sense, not really. Okay. And I think this is where people get hung up the most more than anything on this topic. They mistake hard determinism for being the same thing as predeterminism. They're two different things. They're not actually the same thing, but people who don't understand hard determinism correctly, they assume they're the same thing. And this is the problem that people keep running into. Okay. You know, so it's like, <clears throat> yes, everything is determined by what happened before. That's true. But that's only one aspect of what is being determined. The other aspect is that what is happening right now that you are thinking, feeling, and saying is determining what else is happening right now going forward. Okay. And when I say right now, I mean, an obviously a figurative context past into future. Okay. And so yes, our will, the very, the small will we have is also itself very limited. So there really isn't that much will and will itself is also determined as well. Hardly determined H A R D determined, not hardly is it's massively determined. I'm trying to say. And so, you know, and this is another interesting point is if actual free will existed, things would be horrible because nothing would ever be genuine. So like feelings of affection, empathy, compassion, none of it would be like inherent ingrained in anyone. It would just be a choice. Someone tries to feel all the time. Like, so it's like, okay, but it would never be like an actual feeling you feel. So like a mother has an, if a good quality mother has a natural feeling of impetus to take care of and love, she feels a natural sense of love for her child, right? Care, oxy, you know, oxytocin, dopamine, serotonin, all these hormones are flooding through a system for the child to care for it and, you know, love it and stuff. She's not make she's not sitting down and choosing, hey, I think I'm going to love my kid today and just like choosing it, willing to love her kid. No, she just is loving her kid. It's determined that she's loving her kid or not. If she's a bad mom, the reality is determining that she isn't going to love her kid. Okay. Everything else that's happening and she not loving the kid is determining what the kid experiences and everything else that's going on in the rest of the world while she's having that feeling. So it's being mutually determined ongoing, right? Real time. And so this being the case, like people trying to claim that, Oh, you know, love for, cause the free will, it's always, it was made up by a bunch of people especially within the Christian worldview that, that tried to bring up the topic of, uh, or they're trying to explain away these different things. And so they made this ridiculous claim 
that love is more genuine or more real if it's chosen versus organic or natural, like inherent. But that's completely bullshit. Because think about it. The babysitter example is the example I give for this. If you have a babysitter who is known to be a sociopath or psychopath or someone who doesn't have an inherent sense of love in them, but they literally have to choose and make a, or make a conscious choice to try and love your kid or try. You're never going to trust that relative with your kid for good, obvious reasons. So that kind of so-called love is not actual love. It's not a better form of love. The one, the, the lady, the aunt who inherently, you know, for a fact feels affection for your kid spontaneously. And you know that she feels that spontaneously and is never choosing to feel that is the one who has the deeper love that you're going to trust. So this entire concoction within the religious world of this free will concept, it's, it's a stupidly thought idea in the first place. It's not even deeply thought. It's a bad idea, and it contradicts the reality that we observe directly in the world relating to actual inherent feelings and inherent love and everything else, which are all determined. So the deeper love that we see actually in action is determined love. It's not free will love or free anything love. It's determined love. Okay. And that's a good thing. That's just why it would be horrible if we all had free will, because every one of us would just be choosing everything at every moment. There would be no inherent anything. It would just, everything that ever happened would just be choices. Okay. I choose this. I choose this. Choose, 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 choose. choose. There, there would be no basis as to why things were chosen. There would be no basis as to the pointlessness of any choice. It would just be choose this, choose that, choose, choose, choose. You see what I'm saying? And you enter into the same redundancy principle. So if people don't understand hard determinism correctly, they run into the puppet on a strings redundancy principle where they're, they're not understanding the full scope of it. And on the other end, if people try to or cling to some variation of, of freedom of will to some notable extent, then they run into the, the redundancy principle of it being this horrific nightmare of nothing having any inherency to it at all, where it's just everything is just constantly chosen at every moment with no basis at all whatsoever in anything. It's just choose, 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 choice, choice, choice. And you know what I'm saying? And so it, like it would, <laughs> the concept is obviously man-made is the point I'm trying to get at. The concept of free will is a man-made idea. It doesn't actually exist in any reality whatsoever for obvious reasons. All right. Will and choice always exist within parameters. Always. The very fact that it is a choice means that there are options available and options available are subjective, limited things within determined parameters by nature. Okay. That's why the choices are there in the first place. That's why the will is there. Will is determined by nature. Choices themselves are determined by nature. What choices are available are determined in nature. So this, it's just insane that people still keep attaching this word free to will. It's very stupid. And it's unbelievable how dumb people are in clinging to this concept, okay? It's just a stupid concept. It really needs to be let go of in people's minds, okay? And it, if people can just understand hard determinism correctly without stopping short at only grasping the puppet on strings aspect of it. That is an aspect of it, but that's not the entirety of it. <laughs> you see? So it's like, it's, it's this weird thing in a lot of human psychology. It seems like they just, and I've been trying to understand why is it with people's brains that they can't seem to grasp this, no matter how many times I mention this or talk about it. Like they, they keep having this idea that they're disconnected somehow from what's being determined in this, in some sort of like, no, all that's happening is everything's being determined at every moment, period, and we are disconnected from what is happening. We're only robots and puppets on strings. That's it. That's all it is. That's all it ever can be, etc. Well, in terms of this world and the body you're forced to be in and all that type of stuff, sure. In that regards you can describe it as a puppet on strings. Sure. Of course the matrix, whatever you want to call that. Right. But if you're sitting there aware of that be going on and that being the case, you're not really a puppet anymore in that context fully, because you're, you're aware of you are involved in what else is being determined. Also, you're not dumb. You're aware of what's determining what you're thinking too, to a great extent. Okay. And it's determined your degree of awareness of that is determined also. Yes. 
So this principle of this infinite regression into the past of one thing determines another determines another infinitely back forever, right? Is one aspect, one element of what's going on here. But this, this principle of understanding you, your brain, your physiology, if you don't accept a soul exists, and if you do accept a soul exists, your soul also is hard determined and what you do as a soul and all that's also determined, but it's just another layer beyond the brain and body, right? So whether you believe in a soul or not, whether you think a soul exists independent of the brain or body or not, the principle applies to either. If all you accept is a brain and body as you, that's it. And you don't make any extra identification or claim of what is you, you can still see this point clearly that your brain and body themselves are involved in what is being determined for others while they are determining what is happening for you at the same exact time. Okay. Um, and in future videos, I will try to do my best to do even better to simplify this even more to where this can be understood by literally a kindergartner or preschooler. That's my goal. Okay. I want to simplify this in such a way that how hard determinism is operating can be clearly understood beyond only the puppet on strings aspect of it. Okay. And people can see the parameters of how it's operating versus it's just going on and things are just being determined. That's it. Kind of a thing, right? Because that's, that's kind of like the attitude people like present a lot of times when they just keep going on. Well, that's determined. That's determined. That's determined. That's determined. And they're just, it's like they purposefully are ignoring an understanding or grasp of how this is operating. It's just like, Oh, it's just being determined. That's it. That's all there is to it. And therefore determined yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Little, little, little. It, it, it's really dumb. I, honestly, I, it's almost as dumb as the people who adhere to the free will thing. It's not, it's not quite fully as dumb, but it's almost as dumb. Okay. Because they're purposefully not using their brain to its fuller capacity to grasp this on purpose. Almost it seems, you know, <clears throat> so you don't have to have free will. You don't have to have any kind of independent will or meaningful degree of will that affects things in any notable, meaningful way or any way that you could classify as significant for there to be you having actual real involvement in what is taking place in everything that's happening inside and around you as much as everything or in, outside of your brain and body is determining what's happening, happening there also. Okay. Your involvement is not dependent on this will factor being some independent in and of itself thing. It's not okay. There's a mutual going on thing with this will factor in connection ship to in connection to every single thing else that's being determined all at the same time as you're involved in what's being determined. Okay. And vice versa with other forms, same exact thing going on. Okay. So yes, the legal system does have as much validity as it can have possibly given the circumstances because things are not being predetermined in a beforehand, in a dark room, dark corner, pre-calculated sense. At least that's not what the evidence is showing us anyway, right? If we find that that is happening, then there's got to be this insanely fucking hyper crazed sadistic brain that's just like over the top in terms of like micro calculations of things, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just for fucking the sake of it or whatever, you know, to, OK, we're going to torture this particular form. We're going to have this fish swim up this particular river. We're going to have this corpse rot over in this corner here. We're going to have this tree grow exactly at this time. We're going to have a, you know, this tree topple over during this hurricane. This person survived. That person died. It's just, you, be, you enter into this point of ad absurdum where it becomes a, a total absurdity, basically for, for something to be that micro calculated, you know what I'm saying? Um, and you know, okay, this rock is going to sit here for like 3 billion years, right. And chip off at this rate, <laughs> as well as all this stuff happening around at the same time, you know, this, it's just, 
you enter into a redundancy principle with that. That's uh, it's an absurdity principle, basically. So it's, it's so important to understand how this is actually working on a right here and now in our face on the ground level to not be distracted by this weird off the wall puppet on a strings only concept of the thing. Okay. And if if somebody keeps looking at it that way, they're missing an element to this. They're, they're just are they're They're missing this key point. Um, And I hope in this video, I have helped illustrate this as much as possible and clarify this. So any questions or comments you have on this topic or any further input, please do so. And any th- examples you think we could use to help assist in people understanding this principle better, um, please provide them below. And in the future video, I will talk about the principle of functional, meaningful, useful, hard determinist dynamics in terms of practical daily application. Because I think people way too often get distracted by this cosmic, like, domino effect perspective, like, and they just, they lose track of, okay, what is the on the ground here and now, right in front of our face, hard determinism, how is it operating right as we speak at this exact moment? Okay, they get distracted by this cosmic, okay, everything infinitely regressed into the back leading up to today, this like hyper technicality thing. And then they lose track of the functional, useful, meaningful um, understanding of hard determinism in action right now. Okay. And they, so that causes a jumbled up understanding of the topic in and of itself. If the excessively big picture is what's looked at to the point of a person's distraction from the up close and personal direct picture in front of our face. Okay. And it creates a problem in processing hard determinism accurately. All right. So with that, I hope you have a wonderful evening and I will talk to you soon. Have a good one.